Hi everybody, welcome back. This is Unit 8, Lesson 4. So today we're going to talk about, at least in our notes, uh, the two labs that we did this week, which is using um, the reference tables and predicting solubility. So the first reference table that we deal with in this unit is reference table F. And reference table F is kind of like a yes or no type of table. It tells us if an ionic compound will or will not dissolve in water. That's what it tells us, okay? So reference table F is really a couple tables in one. It looks like this. And as you know from the lab, this is the soluble column. Be sure to check the exception. So yes, most halides, most things that have chloride and bromide and iodide, most of those right here, they're soluble, except when combined with silver, lead, or mercury. So always check the exceptions column. It's not enough just to find them here. You have to make sure you don't have an exception. Same thing with the insoluble compounds. Hydroxides are insoluble. Hydroxides are insoluble, except when combined with anybody from group one or calcium or barium or strontium. So when you're using table F, always check your exceptions column. Here's an example of a type of problem you might see using table F. It says, which of the following compounds is insoluble? What I always do is I always look for group one, a compound with group one, or ammonium. Because those, not because those are insoluble, those are always soluble. And a lot of times you can eliminate most of the choices if you look for those. Group 1 ions, if you don't know, are lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, and cesium, and francium. But you won't find francium in a compound because it's radioactive. So, you don't really have to worry about francium. But they want to know who's insoluble. If I find group one or ammonium, they're soluble. I can just get rid of them. So based on that, I can eliminate two choices. Choice C has ammonium in it. Ammonium is always soluble. So I can get rid of that one. Choice D has potassium in it. Potassium's in group one. Any compound with a group one element in it is always soluble. So I can get rid of that one as well. So then I have to choose between calcium chloride and barium sulfate. When you get to these, once you've eliminated your group ones and your ammoniums, don't look up the first name. Look up the last name and then the first name. So let's look up chlorides and let's look up sulfates. Okay? So now we would go to table F and we'd look up chlorides and sulfates. Here's your chlorides. Chlorides are soluble, except when combined with Ag, Pb, or Hg. In this problem, our chloride is combined with calcium. So that means we are not, we are, we're chlorides, we're not an exception, which means calcium chloride is going to be soluble. Okay? So it can't be that one, which means it must be barium sulfate, and let's look at why. I really need to get this on a split screen. Sulfates are soluble. So you might go, well, how is it insoluble? Because look it. Except when combined with BA. If sulfate is combined with BA, it is insoluble. And the rule for that would be where I say why. Sulfates are soluble except when with B, A, okay? So based on that, I want you to try example number two on your own. It's really the same question. It says, which of the following is not soluble? I want you to try to do number two, please, on your own. And number three is a little bit different, so we'll do this one together. And number three, you're mixing sodium chromate. with potassium carbonate. And they're asking you in this problem, who will pass through the filter? 
So what passes through the filter is anything that's soluble. What stays on the filter is anything insoluble, anything that is a solid. So the first thing you have to do, if this is what you're mixing, you don't look them up, okay? If you're mixing these, you have to predict what you're going to make. Predict your products, just like in the lab that we did. What will you make? And two salt solutions always undergo wipe swapping or double replacement. So the, uh, the last names basically are going to switch, right? You're going to switch partners. So what you will make is sodium carbonate. and potassium chromate. So once you know what you're going to produce when you mix the two solutions, you ask yourself, are they soluble? What is their solubility? Again, just like in the lab that you did. You predicted your products and then you looked up your solubility. When I'm predicting solubility, I remember those two rules. Do you remember? Is there anybody from group one? And is there any, or is there any ammonium? Because these guys are always soluble. Okay? So if you look at this, you may notice sodium is Na, that's in group one. And potassium is K, that's in group one. And why that's important is we just made our life really, really easy. If you are in group one, you're always soluble. Whoa. So sodium carbonate soluble, potass potassium chromate soluble. You're not making anything insoluble. You're only going to have soluble substances. So if you put this mixture and you filter it, these guys are all going to run through. So you're going to have your sodium ions, you're going to have your potassium ions, you're going to have your carbonate ions, and you're going to have chromate ions all running through the filter. There is nothing insoluble made, so nothing will remain on the filter. So they want to know who will pass through the filter. It will be any soluble guys, and everybody's soluble here, so it's all of them. Sodium, chromate, potassium, and carbonate. They're all going to pass through the filter. Only the insoluble would remain on the filter. Okay? So I think we'll leave tonight with table F. Tomorrow in our video, we'll talk about table G. Remember, I want you to do this one. I want you to do number two for tomorrow, and we'll do a little bit more practice with table F tomorrow. Have a great night, everybody. See you tomorrow.